well. The first version of Dungeon Thrall got a lot more attention than I was expecting. It's already been downloaded over 300 times. The store page has gotten almost three and a half thousand views, and it was featured as a staff pick on the SideQuest homepage. Wow. If I had known so many people were gonna check out my game, I probably would have spent a little bit more time polishing it. Or maybe I wouldn't have even had the guts to release it at all. But I'm glad I did, as it got me over that psychological hump of actually shipping my game. And I've already started getting some incredibly helpful feedback from people playing it over on my Discord. Link in the description if you wanna join. I'm just so surprised and thankful to see so many people interested in my game. It is crazy that this thing I've been working on all by myself is now out in the world being played by real people. <laughs> that said, now that I have an actual player base, I feel a lot more responsibility and uh, pressure to keep improving the game. So for this next version of the game, I wanted to make sure I addressed some of the biggest issues, added some of the most requested features, and improved the overall level of polish so it looked a bit better and felt more like a finished game rather than an early prototype. With all that said, let's get into some of the changes. Strafing. I had a few early playtesters say that they wanted the ability to move side to side in the game, and a lot of gamers are used to classic two-stick controls. So I went ahead and added it into the game because more options are always better, right? Speaking of, one of the biggest changes to the game is that I've added fully remappable controls. I'm particularly proud of this one, as it took a lot of work to figure out, but I think was absolutely worth it. I hate when games try to force you to play in one specific way, especially for a game as unusual as a third-person VR game, where there's no gold standard for how controls should work. It's also great because now you can even play the game one-handed, which is a win for customization as well as accessibility. Speaking of things being accessible, one of my worst decisions in the last version of the game was including this this stupid door right here. Because you know what people think when they see a door? Hmm, I wonder what's behind there. And in my case, the answer was nothing, because that door could not be opened. I just added it because I thought it helped decorate the space, and you know, maybe down the line I'd add something coming out of it, like a big boss enemy or something like that. But because all of the doors in the tutorial could open, I was symbolically telling everyone that this door could open as well even though it could not. This, obviously and inevitably, led to some frustration and confusion on the part of my players. It's also crazy because one of my favorite articles in game design is literally called The Door Problem. It uses the humble door as an example for how complicated simple things can be when they're added in the context of a game. A brief excerpt. Premise, you are making a game. Are there doors in your game? Can the player open them? Can the player open every door in the game, or are some doors for decoration? How does the player know the difference? Does a player know how to unlock a door? Do they need a key to solve a puzzle, to wait until a story moment passes? It's almost like this article was written specifically for this exact situation. Definitely read the full article by Liz England. It's great and funny and informative, and you will never look at doors in video games the same way again, unless you um, immediately forget all the lessons you learned and completely break every single rule the moment you go to make a video game. I wonder who would do that. My bad. I have since rectified my mistake and the door now officially opens. But then, what's through the door? Procedurally generated dungeons. This took me forever to figure out, and shout out to Matthew Wadstein for his incredible tutorial on YouTube that gave me a really good starting point. I'm really excited about it, as it opens up a lot of interesting possibilities for gameplay, particularly if I want to introduce any roguelike elements down the line. To add some variety to the procedural dungeons, I created nine different room layouts that get spawned in a random order every time you play. This also gave me the chance to experiment with level design and make each room unique with different layouts and areas for combat, as well as some puzzles to give players a break from fighting. I also made the doors close behind you after you walk through them, increasing the pressure and forcing the player to keep moving forward. Enemies now also spawn in set waves that get harder with each room you clear, rather than just spawning in one at a time like before. 
One of the other biggest and most visible changes is that I improved the lighting and overall graphics in the game. Before, there were a lot of areas and textures that for some reason rendered completely black, which made it really hard to see what you were doing. This has now all been fixed, though my solution may have some slight performance issues that I'll need to address in a future update of the game, as I want to make sure I can maintain a consistently high frame rate no matter what's happening on screen. I also created some new custom music for the game, as well as a simple music manager to change the audio between the main menu, in-game, and when you get a game over. There's also a new spooky ambient cave noise to help tie everything together and add some immersion. As well as a success sound for when you clear a room and open a door. I will definitely continue to add more sound effects as I move forward for things like enemies and doors and traps and picking up potions, as having that audio feedback makes a big impact while playing a game. And maybe the most important update, I added my logo to the credits page of the menu. This version of Dungeon Thrall is out now. So if you haven't played it already, or if you're ready for the latest and greatest version, head over to SideQuest to download. Link in the description below. And if there's anything else you want to see in the game, if you have any other thoughts or feedback, if you want me to go into more detail on any of the features I've added, or if you just want to hang out and talk about VR and video games, please leave a comment on this video or consider joining my Discord. We'd love to have you. All the best, and see you next time.